Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Mythbusting here in the Mythbusting world and in this episode we will be revisiting two topics that we have actually revisited before. We last did this in Minecraft 1.8 and now that 1.9 is here I've got a whole bunch of questions I want to ask about this update again. The first thing we're going to be checking out is Instant Mine. If you haven't heard this before, its most common use is when you have Efficiency 5 on a Diamond Pick and you've got Haste 2 on a Beacon and this allows you to instantly break stone blocks which can be great when you need to dig out large areas of space. So we're going to be testing this in 1.9 on the various new blocks that have been added. We've got the end rods to test, the different variations of the purple -pur blocks, so we've got end stone bricks the grass path block, frosted ice, dragon's head, and of course the chorus farm as well. Now that's just one of the two topics that we're going to be revisiting. The other one is to do with the beacon beam. So we're going to take all of those new blocks that were added in 1.9, we're going to put them above the beacon beam and find out which of those block the beacon beam and which of those blocks the beam is allowed to go through. So when it comes to survival Minecraft, there could potentially be loads of different combinations, you know, different levels of haste, We've got wooden, stone and iron tools. We're not going to be doing all the different combinations, otherwise I would be here all day. We're going to focus on survival Minecraft. Of course, you're most likely going to be working with your diamond tools and no more than haste 2. Now this first one that I'm going to show you, I've got haste 2 on at the moment, but believe me, you can actually just instant mine this with your fist. So there is no real mining time on that, you can use your fist. Um, then we have the efficiency 5 pick here with haste 2. If you have any lower than than that then you won't be able to instant mine per per blocks but it's not the same for all of them as you can see we've got some slabs here these can't be instantly mined the mining speed is a little bit lower than what we have here are double slabs so watch as I break these blocks you'll notice it's slabs dropping onto the ground so those can't be instant mined either then we have the pillar blocks these ones can and so can the stairs as well so for your convenience, I have done all of this testing off camera. We're going to blitz through the results together quickly. So this first one, efficiency 4 on your pick, will go through the end stone bricks. And what's interesting about this is it's made out of end stone, and end stone is considerably slower to mine. But there you go. The next one is the grass path block, efficiency 4 on a shovel. We'll instant mine that. Then we have the frosted ice, which had a very interesting result. Uh, no tool works on it, no efficiency increases the speed of it, you can't instant mine it, however, when you have haste 2, you actually mine the blocks slightly faster, which I found to be very odd, a interesting quirk, and of course to do that, we tested at night time, so the frosted ice wouldn't melt, and then over here we have the dragon's head, there's no specific tool for mining this, and there is no instant mine, because efficiency doesn't affect it, and neither does haste. Then last of all, we have the chorus plant, and the chorus... It's Chorus Plant and Chorus Flower, yes, and both of these can be done with an Efficiency 2 Axe. Here's another little change that's relevant. The Cobweb, of course, isn't a new block in 1.9, but in 1.9 the shears were made so that you could mine the Cobweb and it would drop the Cobweb rather than requiring Silt Touch. And this doesn't have an instant mine option however efficiency will work on your shears and you'll be able to mine it faster and also in the range of the beacon you can see it's not possible to instant mine it so when it comes to the beacon beam i can show you the items that it can go through right now because of course i've left them in place so the beam will go through the dragon's head there is actually an end rod right there and we've got them in the other positions as well so all of those are good then up here we have the chorus flower and the chorus plant on top of it you can see the beam is able to go through both of those and I just finished testing these blocks and they're going to go over here with the other ones that the beacon beam can't go through so that's the end stone brick and all of the purple -pur variants so we're not done yet, there's still more testing to do, and this one is actually pretty useful to know, I think. If you happen to have a base underground, underneath an ocean, and your beacon goes through the water of that ocean, then a player running around with Frostwalker on the top might disrupt that beacon beam. But good news for you, that is not the case. The beacon beam can go through the frosted ice. So there is another block or entity that was added in 1.9, and we didn't do the instant mine test on this, because of course if you click it, it's going to explode, which I guess you could say is instant mining anyway. But what I would like to know is if the beacon beam can go through the end crystal. So we're going to put it down, we're going to remove the obsidian, and then the beacon beam is going to wait for it. Bam! There it is. It goes through the end crystal. And look at that. What a cool combination those two are together. 
And even from a distance, that's quite noticeable that there's something up there floating in the beacon beam. I think there's an idea for your survival worlds. If you've got some beams that you want to make look a little bit more interesting, maybe put some end crystals on them. I think that looks really cool. And I know that some of you wouldn't let me get away with forgetting it. There was one block that I forgot for a second there, and that is the grass path block, which you can clearly see the beacon beam doesn't go through. So now we know, which is all good. Anyway, that is going to be it from me this episode of Minecraft Myth Busting. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like. As always, thank you so much for all of your support. And of course, check out the Myth Busting playlist if you haven't done so already. Loads and loads of stuff we have done, as you can see here in the Myth Busting world, lots of things to learn about. And of course, if you have a question, something you want answered, leave it down below in the comments. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.